ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year, depending on when I put this out. Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Andor. This is a Star Wars Disney TV show, which is an excellent to maybe the best made show Disney has put out for Star Wars. I'll get to that in a second, but because of the way I put these out, I want to wish everybody happy holiday, merry Christmas, happy new year, my love to everybody, wishing you the best, hope everything goes great, Star Wars, and all, right? We have one of the best written shows, one of the best acted, this thing is um, wall to wall good, better than good. I have a little bit of a weird problem with the show but that has nothing to do with me trying to be honest about it okay so this show stars diego luna kyle solia adria Adrona, stellan skarsgård fiona shaw genevieve o'reilly i mean everything is great i don't even know half the names here but when you watch the show you're like wow there's a quality to the sets the music seems good balance not overdrawn it's got the hallmarks of a great show and yet i come away from this like i don't care and a little annoyed because why can't you why couldn't you do this for obi-wan and i got this feeling because i've done the podcast now on ahsoka and mandalorian season three they have a mindset of those are action-packed comic book TV shows, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, which is a fucking crime. And this was a well-thought-out, you know, series about the greediness of the Empire from the ground up. And the little bit of a discrepancy between time. So, you can, I think I talked about this, you can play with the Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Ahsoka, and kind of... Mix it in a pot with what happened after the Battle of Endor. And, you know, your mindset's there. Like, what's going on? Who's still around? Who can show up? Oh, Luke's here. That type of thing. Endor is in the past, right? So it's before the fucking movie, which is before Star Wars 4 New Hope. And the, the, the movie Rogue One, whatever, was all about getting the plans for the Death Star. We all know what happened to that crew, if you've ever seen it. Spoiler. And maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But you've got a show. The directors, the writers, they must have had such a great collaboration because you've got the first three episode arc directed by Toby Haynes and then Susanna White and then um, Benjamin Karen and T Tony Haynes. So it just feels like a well thought out, scripted, plotted, fucking show three episodes boom changes do it redirects itself it gives you a new situation it kind of puts you on the edge of your seat and then lulls you it has some boring shit in here throughout it but again i have friends who tell me to watch this show or that show and i don't doubt at the time that these are amazing great shows for me though it's the mood i'm in right if i'm not in the mood to watch a real life Sopranos show, or right about crime. Like I'm, I'm just not in the mood to watch. I'm not gonna watch. I got so many things to watch. Uh, I love the show Weed. You know, how long it took me to get through that to finish it. Like, there's a, a point where I'm trying to find things I want to watch that interest me in a genre or just a particular mood I'm in. I'm sure some of these NCIS shows are amazing. Uh, Hawaii Five-O. I just don't feel like watching real docu series type procedural shows. And times when I do. I go for it. I have like a list. This is one of those shows. I don't, as I'm watching it, I don't really care. I'm not really looking forward to like what is season two going to be. There's not a rewatchability. And yet it's the best made thing Disney's put out. It's mind blowing to me because as much as I want to love Obi-Wan, I'm going to give Ahsoka a pass because it's just Rebels Season 5, Nostalgia Berries type thing. 
Yeah, I quote, trademark, I stole it. And there's, you know, Mandalorian, Mandalorian. It's like fun, can't be cheesy. It doesn't hold up to the first season. And you're getting through it, but, you know, you're having fun. And you're constantly fucking annoyed at how short these shows are, how cut off and abrupt they seem. And when you make a mistake in some of these other shows, like putting in a fucking episode of uh, Mandalorian and Boba Fett season and two episodes and taking it out and feeling like what the fuck is going on and you know Ahsoka you know going nowhere then going somewhere fast but not really um, feeling like it was a well it feels like some things were stretched out this is amazing it's quality I, I you know feel when I watched Obi-Wan I felt so pissed off at times I'm just watching one of my favorite characters favorite actors playing the character it all works so great and yet so I'm going what the fuck are they doing with this chase scene with the kid this set looks like it's five dollars what's the balance here but yeah it's the heart of the story why the fuck doesn't Obi-Wan know that Darth Vader is Anakin is alive bullshit you had to make the story I would have turned it around in its head here you, you know you're boxed in between this time period and before Star Wars A New Hope. There's a Mon Martha in here, and what you know, Ahsoka had the Mon Martha too. And because I said that thing about the time, I'm well aware of it because I'm a Star Wars nerd, but I can see this being like little nitpicks that are, you know, kind of. You know, making it a little hard for people to get around. I cannot in my life see this being one of the most anticipated shows ever. No. Could it be one of the sleeper things that is looked back on as probably one of the best things they've done? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. If you're into this stuff, it's fucking amazing. You've got three arcs. The first three arcs is, you know, Ando's looking for his sister. Um, and they almost bored me with the flashbacks you know i'm watching a fucking show that's set before the time period of my other shows set before this and boxed in between this area and i'm watching it and they're showing flashbacks of him as a kid and how he lost his sister and he's still looking for her in the future he's an adult blah 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 and they kind of connect that scene in Rogue One, where out of nowhere, Ando has to kill this guy in the fucking alley. You're like, whoa, this, this movie's serious, Rogue One, quote, quote, quote. And this one has to do the same thing. He's this fucking guy. He's trying to look for his sister, and he gets fucked with by these fucking security people, a planetary emperor, adjacent fucking security, whatever. And, and he's got to fight. He fights, and he winds up headbutting this guy, and he dies. And the other guy is like, well, he takes the gun, and he's got to kill these fucking guys. And I'm like, whoa. You did it again with the mature thing. I get where you're going. And by the third arc, you're getting connections to... Like, this is how political stuff should have been done in the um, prequels. How You know what? No. Oh, I like the prequels for what they tried to do. The quality of writing and dialogue should have been more like this. And you find out this and that and who's coming here. And then all of a sudden... We've got to, they're going to get Andor into this um, situation, and then there you go, your next three arcs. And as you're going through the first three arcs, and it's, it's doing the right things and building the world, making me feel like this is a real set, and it feels like it's really connected, not cut one scene to the other camera pans, and like, you know, this looks like Xena or Hercules, which I'm not knocking because I love fucking Xena and Hercules, those shows back in the day. Um... So you've got the first three episodes of him trying to find his sister, the things that go on, in the pl and it's a little weird because of the planet he's on, and he's looking for his sister, and he knows people here, his adopted mother sort of is here, and again, what great fucking acting, the people they chose for this, casting, gets a thumbs up, and although I can't say the music is overwhelming, it's got to be uh, uh, at least on par, good, because it didn't disturb me and pull me out. Like some, some other things do. Again, if I'm going to put in a mindset, Disney is treating some of the action-packed shows like fun cartoon adaptions. And I'm fine with that. I might gripe when I do my little things. 
But, you know, I smile and have fun. I really think Obi-Wan is the, you know, the experiment that they did that, you know, won my heart. But the critic in me is like, uh, this is the opposite. It's so weird. It's, holy shit. Why don't you do this for fucking Obi-Wan? Why didn't you do this for Ahsoka? Book of Boba Fett, The Mandalorian? Come on, like, real arcs with hour-long fucking... It's just top-notch quality. I really like it. Yeah, there is some fucking boring shit in here. But it's just boring to me and my mindset and what I'm into right now. I'm running adventures in my head with Star Wars with, like, fucking... Um, Thrawn and shit. And there's connections to the characters that I play. You know, because I play... I'm a dungeon master, game master, whatever. And I'll prepare, like, something that's popular. So, if uh, Transformers are popular, I'll make a little Transformers adventure. I'll tie it into, you know, the superheroes. Whatever I gotta do. Just have fun if we're in the moment. Uh, and the fucking sequels to the Star Wars movies ruined fucking everything. Everybody just wants to vomit. But, that is an aside... And those first three episode arc, it gets you, you're like, wow. Then it starts another one, and you got this action packed, uh, you know, we've got to get into this place and steal a heist movie. And you're like, all right, why didn't it complete here? Why didn't it complete there? And it's a three episode arc, so the third episode is going to. And, and you found yourself. I found myself assured and like, okay, you know, you're, th you're six episodes into a 12 episode season. And I can feel where they're going. It might not be the most thing I'm excited for. Like I, I want to, you know. But you got droids. You got Star Wars. It feels right for what they're doing. And holy shit, by the end of the, you know, six arcs, you've got a new things they they built, uh, expanding the world of Star Wars in a in a decent way. Doesn't feel tried and used and constantly thrown in your face. It's a progression of this guy's fucking life and. How he got caught up into the rebel, the beginning of the rebel alliance against the Empire. And then with the Rogue One movie, and why is he so dedicated to this or that? And Skarsgård's acting, you know, everybody in here is just on point. Because now that you've got another arc where he's going to do this heist, he's got to fit in with the people, you know, do this heist movie aspect of the, this arc. And you've got to build all that up. You've got to flesh all that out. Why didn't they do this with the other shows? I'm using this fucking Andor as an example. But I get it. The other shows, and in my head, I do this with the Kung Fu movies that I love. The Shaw Brothers movies. To me, Avenging Eagle, best fucking movie. Hands down, writing, acting, you know, fighting scenes. It's got everything, but it's, it's writing and acting is just superb. And that's for a movie that's like dubbed, right? However, the kid with the golden arm, the, the five deadly venoms are... The action-packed comic book version, cartoon versions. It's just action-packed, beautiful, giddy, nerdy stuff. And it just, it's just bonkers crazy, and I love it. Three episode aux, and it is now pulling off this. I'm meeting these people. I got to fit in. I got to convince them. I'm in a weird position. I'm doing it for the money. What am I doing it for? Who's this person doing it for? What's this relationship? I, and then all of a sudden, what? You've got little things in here that like throw you off and you're like, wait, these people don't know how to, I don't know, a magna lift thing works. So they're planning the heist and Andor's like, wait, you don't, you don't know how to get the fucking thing out? Oh, how does it work? And he's got to describe to them where the mag lift propulsor thing is or whatever. And he's, and he's kind of beside himself like, what the fuck am I in here now? Because he's in with a group that, you know, the Rebel Alliance, the beginnings of it, you know, you got to do shit. You gotta do fucked up shit. And it's explained, you know, what was the line they used in the original movies? Like, many Bothans died for this, you know, leading up to the Rogue One movie, uh, getting the plans for the Death Star, or the second Death Star, whatever it is. There is an undertone of adult stuff that happens in the Star Wars universe, and it's there. You know it when you're watching it, but you're watching the fantasy, you know, um, Jedi, scoundrel type. Leia, Chewbacca, it's just what a great feeling. But in how did it get there? What's the undertone of this, you know, world where the Empire is, you know, taking over? And yes, you, this is balance between the prequels and this, and 
you know, at the end of the prequels, the Emperor takes over, Palpatine, blah, blah, blah. So you know you're in the shit, and this show is showing you it. It's down on the ground, um, fucking, and again, the acting superb, the little twist, the Andor going, you don't know how to, I'm fucking flying it. And they're like, wait, he goes, no, I'm going to do this fucking mission. I'm going to make sure I can fly this fucking thing out of here. So by the end of that arc, boom, he's got to get the thing. They succeed. Who gets killed? You know, I don't do many spoilers and plot reveal type things, but it's completed. And one little thing I kind of don't like what they did is instead of Andor having a mishap where he gets caught for the stealing thing, he, he completes it. He's one of the one of the ones that survive, whatever. And he's caught because he's on some planet trying to be indiscreet. He's trying to be, you know, you know, keep keep a, his head down. And, and he gets pegged out as someone who's cons- cons- suspicious. And you're like, hey, stop fucking looking around like an asshole. And, you know, you look like, and he gets caught, he gets put in jail. Now, he doesn't get put in jail for the robbery he just did. He gets put in jail for, like, disorderly conduct. And the Empire is pissed at this point. You know, like I said, you're seeing political stuff, my Martha, and superb acting is coming together. And poor Andor, where he would get six months for, he gets like six years. <laughs> and you're like, hold on. And he goes to this like prison, and they're making like, um, I don't know, parts. And I'm, it could be a parts for the Death Star. Like, you know, not really at first. And it's basically you go to prison, and you're part of a workforce. And everybody has their little job. You got five men at a table. So your next three arcs are, I'm in prison. It's a prison break. And again, good writing, great cinematography to feel, uh, cutting back and forth between what's going on with his adopted mother and like the planet. This is a delicate balance that these other shows just fuck up all the time. And again, it doesn't ruin them for me. I had funny shit watching Ahsoka. Obi-Wan kind of broke my heart here and there because of the bullshit. Again, it's like the experiment. Book of Boba, I'm not thrilled with, but these are fun rides. I mean, the Lauren, you're going to get on, jump on, and have fun, and maybe pull out your lightsaber. Uh, you know, here I am going, wow, first three episodes. Okay, second three episodes. You got, you know, okay, you're kidding me. Then, he's got to get out, right? You've got the prison. Now, again, you're on another arc, and you've got to build up the world. You've got to introduce new characters. You've got to make me care about these characters. And guess what? They do it. They fucking do it. And you've got, like, who's that guy that does all the fucking, you know, he did all the, you know, Andy Serkis. He's a fucking, like, floor manager of a prison, a prison, and, you know, you've got to turn this guy around the way because you, you're trying to get out. And they make you care. They make you give a fuck about this old guy having a stroke, about why they got to be at this table and everybody's part in it has to complete this part, and there's a uh, challenge to it, and people get fucking electrocuted, or they get extra rations type thing if you do well. You've got to build this up. You've got to build the world. you got to make me believe this is a real prison, this, this, and that. What's connected to it? Again, superb stuff. However, by this point in the movie... Remember, you're, you're at the sixth episode arc, you're doing the prison break, you're getting ready for whatever, you know. Oh, no, I'm sorry. You, you're getting ready for the prison break as a episode nine type thing. Um, you know, ten. You're looking at an annoyance, and the only real bad factor of the show is this fucking guy who they introduced in the beginning, who got, you know, punked, basically, by Andor and um, Luthien, Luthien, Luthien. Whatever the fuck they're calling him. Uh, and I gotta admit, it's annoying. And I, even when you come to... I don't know how much I would give away, but... Um, there's this guy called Cyril Khan or something like that, and there's not too much uh, going on with him, except, you know, he he's trying to make his way in his job, and he tries to catch Andor, and he's like, 
I guess, talented in his in a way where he connects Andor to the death of these people. Because Andor, from the beginning, is getting people to cover for him. You know, he's got connections on the planet. And, um... He's the only fucking... Only character that I don't like, and it's annoyingly hampering the show. And, again, even now that we're up to episode 10 and we're getting the, you know, crux of the prison break... I, I, it's so fucking annoying, and even when you get to the end of this and you f- see where his ultimate story went, I found it bullshit. I just didn't really think there was a need for it on the level they did it. Again, you don't want to hit people over the head too much, and this was just a one factor here. So, like, you know, Cyril, Cyril Khan's character, I mean, the actor's good, and I guess I like the beginning, like how they sort of set him up, but he's got to be put, and again, when you're layering all these episode arcs into looking for my sister, getting caught up in this stuff, getting recruited for a a heist mission, then you got to do your prison break. All the other stuff that works really well in the, um, uh, in this whole, you know, up and down arcs, I don't like Cyril Khan. I don't fucking like the overboardness of it, they should have toned it down a little. But when you've got em- Empire stuff, the cast, the, when it's cutting to people, it's awesome. Forrest Whitaker, the Saul Guerrero is in this thing. You know, I might just say that, um, you know, like I said, by episode 10, I'm really clearly done with um, Cyril Khan. I don't think that, uh, it was his acting in the sense, like he was that one guy in some of these shows that you clearly see, you know, his father got him the job. No, this is <clears throat> really good. I like the way they went with it at first, but he's the only sore spot in this whole show. And it's not even a bad, oh my God, it ruined the show. It's not a jaw jaw type thing, whatever. It's just a little too much for me, really too much. And now you've got the, you know, 10, 11, you want to get to the end of this whole series he breaks out and his uh, adopted mom type person is sick she dies he's going to come back for the funeral and we know this is not going to end well because everybody's catching on and the way you where you're going to go back to the empire's cracking down your fucking girlfriend and <clears throat> wink wink girlfriend whatever the fuck is they don't do nothing she has a boyfriend the boyfriend rats him out and then when the empire comes you I am. This almost happened to me. The Empire's got his girlfriend, Diego Luna's past girlfriend, whatever. And when he comes back for her help and to sell parts and get off the planet, she has a boyfriend, and he's like really nice and whatever. But he finds out about Andor, he rats him out, and when the Empire comes and catches his girlfriend, who's Andor's past friend, they got her pushed up against the wall and said, "Hey, what the fuck are you?" And then he shoots him to death. <laughs> Now, how that happens and connects with me, I was camping one time, and I was going in my tent looking for something, and, you know, things are lost in your tent, and when I come out, there's a fucking state trooper with my girlfriend at the time, and he's got her by the arm, and he's, like, kind of yanking her, and I just flipped out, I'm like, get your fucking hands off my girl, and this guy's, like, got a gun and stuff, and it was a weird situation, because none of my friends are there, like, smoking weed, she passed, they passed her to join around. And he came out of the fucking woods. But I was livid that he was manhandling my girlfriend at the time. And it got really tense. And he didn't shoot me. But this, So you got all these layers here. And you're getting to the end of the show. Andor's got to come back. I think his mom's name is Marva. Uh, the funeral. All this is working. You're, you're looking at this. You're watching it and going. By now, holy shit. This show has got it on point. It had a fucking plan. It's stuck to it. These people pulled it off. Diego Luna, uh, Skarsgård. Well, this is just quality all around. And he's got to get back. And, you know, there's also this little thing with the money. Um, when he did the heist job, he had a, he kind of revealed to them that he was a mercenary in this. And, you know, he had a bond. And there's this twists and double take, take type things. But now you know the shit's hitting the fan and it's over because this is going to end badly. It kind of does because, you know, they know you're coming back. They've got you set up. 
you know, you, you know your fucking mom died type thing. Now, all through this is this pretty, really good imperial woman type thing. But she gets connected with Cyril Khan, and that kind of pisses me off. But there's this element of the Empire's uh, FBI division type thing where they got to figure things out. And it permeates the whole show, and it's done really well. Little nitpicks is where I think it kind of shows a little bit of flaws here. But again, you'll be in on this roller coaster ride of three episode arcs, great acting, great visuals, special effects. You got your droid here and there. You've got a pretty fucking solid story that had a plan and it culminates at the end. It's pretty fucking good. I'm going to borderline on great, but, you know. This is something else. Uh, again, it makes me go back because this isn't something I wanted to watch in that sense. Even watching it and giving it the, it's a great show, moniker, you know, how important that is on my channel. Um, I don't care. Like... Yeah, maybe I want to see little green fucking baby Yodas and, you know, over-the-top fucking Boba Fett shit, uh, Sokotana lightsaber shit that just fucks everything up with continuity and what's fucking canon and a canon, right? And this is the nerd Star Wars shit, and here comes the show. It's fucking amazingly done, acted, filmed. I'm even going to give the score a thumbs up, even though I don't... It doesn't stand out to me like, you know, the movie, the original movies would... But hey, you know what? You didn't fuck me up. You didn't draw me out. It feels right. There's a uh, cadence. There's a cadence. There's a rhythm to this thing, and it works over and over. How they did the directing, the Benjamin Carson and the last ones. How they did the three episode arcs. They just nailed it almost every level here. Again, I don't like the one fucking character. He doesn't ruin it for me. It's just fucking annoying and like. Almost like you didn't need it. You could have done this with him in season two and brought him back. That might have been better. But they're connecting him constantly, Cyril Khan, to this episodes, And, you know, I think that's really... Um, you know, I, I guess it's a... You know... It, again, like, they got these things in mind. Like, this is an action show. This is going to be, like, a cartoon... Um, oh, well, Denise Gao as Deirdre Miro is the Supervisor Imperial Security Bureau. Oh, that was it. ISB. Fantastic. Um, even some of the corniness, even some of the silliness, and you connecting some of the people who are on the heist at Mon Martha. I mean, it's just done right. The knitting together, it just feels right. This isn't a woven blanket with his fucked up part. This is superbly done. It just doesn't excite me. It doesn't get me going. And I don't want to watch it again. Technically, you know what? What I want? Hmm. I'm trying to think, what would make me watch this again? I guess connective tissue would, in the sense of, could you? All right. So let's go. Let's just get crazy, okay? Could you? make it that Andor or one of these people survived the Rogue One movie. So here's spoilers, plot reveal. In Rogue One, to get the plans for the Death Star, everybody dies. And I'm not even a fan of that movie, but that Darth Vader scene is fucking bonkers, amazing. You know, let's get fucking Vader in a hallway and shoot it like a fucking maniac and he, you know, goes crazy. Like, fucking yeah. But, I'm not a big fan of that movie in general. Everybody dies. Could you take that element? Oh, you got Mon Martha, right? So you've already seen her in Ahsoka. Um, so that's already there. And I guess, but I'm just trying to think of like a main, the, the main character. Can you take an Andor? Or even his girl, even the Suedo girlfriend. Could you establish them? Well, you did Sol Guerrera. You know, kind of thing. But he kind of ends in Rogue One. Like, can we 
thread this all the way to the other shows in a in a convincing way. I think this is the good way to do it. Like you don't do it now, and you do have like I said, my Martha. Well, you I can see it happening, but I would. You know what? I don't think they would say Diego Luna's character survived and like age him. So I don't. I don't know. Maybe you can like pull that off. And that's like what two little itty bitty minor things. One, a character whose arc's like pretty solid. The, the, Cyril Khan, and I just don't like where they went with him. And the little bit of the flashback, a little bit of boredom in there, but it's meant to be. I'm not going into watching a, you know, Hannibal Lecter movie type show and expecting action every five minutes. You know, that might be my Hawaii Five O action when I want to watch NCIS, you know, going to court, you know, procedure shows. This nails it on so many levels. I'm so happy because Disney fucking has a habit of fucking these things up. Like I said, watching Obi-Wan was a joy, but, you know, critically in my mind, my brain is fucking moaning, my eyes are rolling in the back of my head, like, what the fuck are you doing? At the end of the fucking prequels, Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan looks pretty decent. He's got a job, he goes to Tatooine, he hands off Luke and Leia's with Organa Solo, I mean, you know, uh, Organa's. Obi Wan should have started with him being okay, and then he looks at a hollow net and sees the fucking Emperor pull out Vader, and he goes, "Oh my God!" And then he goes into a depression, and that's how fucking Obi Wan starts. Not he cut himself. He should have showed Obi Wan t- actually he's talking to Qui Gon, and he loses that connection. And when he sees the hollow net, and can't believe that Anakin survived. No, he's got to be told by fucking Reva. I fucking hate that. So there are elements of that. That really, you know, annoy me for a character that I love more. Here is one of the best written shows. And take it out of Star Wars. It's a great show. People should be getting applause. You've got writers that should be winning awards. Actors that are fucking nailing it. Give them awards too. Um, uh, How important it is for these sets on a sci-fi show to be, you know, believable. Nailed it. You got... uh, a fucking shiny imperial prison, you got planet, it just feels right on a lot of levels. Again, give credit to these people. If this is one of your favorite shows ever, I am not surprised. I am not surprised if you're fucking waiting for season two because they, they these other shows are too much candy, they're too sweet, they overload you with cheesiness and stuff. Uh, Ahsoka's arc in, in Ahsoka is kind of like muddled and like, like what? Ahsoka the White, you know, and what you had a relationship with your apprentice and Sabine, you know, what's going on here? This didn't have this show ground up, builds up its fucking cast, the people you're going to be caring about, the people you're going to hate. Because again, this Cyril Kong guy might be perfectly written for me to hate. You're supposed to fucking hate him, he's supposed to be fucking annoying, and it keeps popping up. And the amazing work with. Minor characters that don't have a lot of time, but holy shit, did they bring it? Andy Circus in his fucking role, like silly fucking stupid shit. You want him to start doing his? Dude, I love that scene in uh, was it like Black Panther? Where he's like, baby, you know, he's stuck in the chair and he's singing. I, I get a kick out of that stuff, but it's just corn cheese ball stuff. And uh, one of the best written shows, best acted. Piece together, plot driven, three story arc. Like, holy shit, let's get me some fucking Buffy and some of the great shows I love. Shows that did 22 episodes a year. Go back and watch Star Trek Next Generation. Yeah, there was some fucked up episodes. Maybe even on the first couple of seasons of Buffy. But when you're riding this click and you've got this groove and everything's working together, it's great television to watch. I'm so fucking impressed. I'm so happy. It was made, and let's be honest, I didn't give a fuck beforehand, and I kind of don't give a fuck afterwards. But that could be the point of this. You want all these nerds, you know, joygasming, watching Ahsoka and Obi-Wan and Mandalorian. Let's give some of the more adult, gritty, mature, what the fuck is the Imperial place, and why the rebels were forced to make desperate moves and really start doing some fucked up shit. This is it. And kudos for them. Kudos for everybody who fucking decided to put some effort into this. 
A concise story broken up into arcs that you can fucking wrap your head around. That don't bore you too much. That aren't too off the wall zaniness. I don't have to see a kid who's clearly caught in the forest running around dodging men and jumping from buildings and getting away from Obi-Wan. Like, fuck off with getting stabbed through the chest with lightsabers and surviving. Poor fucking Qui-Gon with that shit. No, this shit, this story... This element of how they piece it together, fucking superb. Even the producers, give them fucking credit. You never name these fucking people. Sam Wahlberg, Tony Gilroy, Kathleen Ke Fuck Kathleen Kennedy. She can go fuck herself. So fuck you. And Diego Luna is that actor, but Toby Haynes. Good on you, location, cinematography, Adriano Goldman, Frank Lamb, Damian Garcia, the editors. Yeah, fuck you. Go editors. Fuck yeah, John Gilroy, Tim Porter, Hazel Bale, Dan Roberts, Francis Parker, Matthew Canning, Simon Smith, Yan Miles. You only fucking fucked up with me with the flashbacks, so I'm sure people loved it, and I thought I was going to be bored to death. I wasn't. It's a fucking gritty, introspective show. You're finding people's character arcs. You can plot it. You can feel the buildup, the tension, the lulls on purpose. This is here. On purpose, you got a fucking element that creeps up and you're like, it makes sense. Let's fucking get more of this. Because as much as I'm going to cheese ball out on Ahsoka and, God forbid, Obi-Wan Season 2, if it ever comes around, The Mandalorian, we've got Thrawn. I got a feeling this, is go this could be a mainstay. Just give these people what they need. Give them another 12-episode fucking season. Have them an hour long. You want to do... I Three arcs again? You got it. You fucking nailing it. Can't say enough good things about Andor except watch this show. If there's any element that you would think you like, it's a Star Wars world, but it's not too over the top space wizards and uh, snarky smugglers. You might get a little bit of that in there, but you've got enough grittiness on the ground, Empire. The beginning of the rebels, the desperation, the political intrigue, that it drives it forward, it makes it real, you're relatable, you're caring about characters, and by the end, you're fucking standing up going, this was fucking, you give them a little applause, this was fucking, hands down, one of the best things that Disney's done. Kudos on all of you, uh, you know, what is it, a political spy thriller, is it a science fiction, action, no, yeah. It, it just does it well. It does it so well. I'm so happy for them committing to this because, again, when I heard the Slater shows, Obi-Wan, you know, I was like, who the fuck gives a fuck about Andor? I'm serious. Like, who cares? Rogue One, they all die. The Rebels get the plans. I want to watch a show set before that. Apart from my Mando... Ahsoka, Boba Fett type um, grouping that's kind of jarring for me time wise. And, you, and when you're doing flashbacks, you know what? Fuck it. Commitment to a great idea, a premise that's solid, stuck to and figured out, and easy to fucking watch show if you're into this stuff. This is great stuff. Watch Andor. Star Wars Andor. I can't believe I'm saying this. And I'm not even saying I'm. I'm so excited to watch it again, or I'm going to wait for season two. I'm so excited. No, um, I'm not. But damn, am I not going to admit when they do something right, and it's fucking greatness is on this thing in so many ways. Maybe it's just like you've been treated to so much shit. I don't know what I was watching, but <clears throat> I don't know. It was like maybe Red Letter Media or something like that. And they, they're talking about how they like, like, beginning of Picard or whatever or some show and they're like when you watch the first two seasons of Picard and you want to fucking vomit and the fucking damage they did to the fucking you know and the Star Wars sequel it's like it's such a breath of air fresh air that maybe I'm used to like dodging the shit and holding my nose with the stink making excuses for shit because the nerd kid in me wants to really love something and the elements are there but you know when you pull back and go hey he's a critic this is like garbage, right? Kudos. Andor. Watch the show. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And you're looking at someone who didn't care to watch it, didn't want to watch it. 
don't want to fucking watch second season two in that sense of like where's it going but holy shit acting plot this is this is good this is something like i would want to examine the scripts on this and the writing and to fucking see what was happening in the writing room when they're all getting together. This is how it works. This is how it should be done. Do this with all your properties. This is how the beginning and the love of Buffy starts and Angel and you know supernatural. Fifteen seasons of corny cheeseball, fucking zany stupidness, gods and angels and just fucking craziness. They commit to a show. They ride what's good. They pull out the shit that's bad, and you've got a cheese ball show going 15 seasons, go Supernatural. This is your fucking show. Run it to the rails. If not, take this element and learn from it. Here's a character in the show most people, I bet you, didn't give a fuck about. But you put something good. You make it excellent. You tie it together with superb writing, casting, acting, set design. Arcs that are fucking believable and relatable. People you care about and you got to build this up over and over, over 12 episodes. Good on you. Everybody should be watching and uh, go ahead right now. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Whenever I put these things out, I want you all to be having the best time. The loved ones, give them a hug. Give them a big hug and kiss from me. I love you all. Happy holidays, everybody. Take care.